Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Let's transition now and talk about HPV negative head and neck cancer. What do you use as standard of care in that setting? Uh, well, it's an important subset. Uh, as I uh, alluded to, the frequency is declining as smoking rates have decreased, which is a real success for a public health effort. Uh, but we still see HPV negative head and neck cancers. This is a major clinical problem because the survival is uh, uh, relatively poor, 40 to 50 percent long-term uh, uh, cures. And in this population, we've not seen a significant uh, improvement in survival over the years. The, the bedrock standard therapy is to combine cisplatin uh, either every uh, 21 days in a traditional uh, every three week cycle for three cycles with, week, uh, with daily radiotherapy. Uh, and more recently, the, the uh, US uh, uh, oncologic community has shifted to weekly cisplatin uh, with daily radiotherapy. So uh, cisplatin chemoradiation is the traditional uh, uh, regimen used. There have been a number of efforts to test induction therapy, uh, two or three drug uh, induction uh, chemotherapy followed by chemoradiation in an effort to improve overall survival uh, from HP, uh, for H HPV negative patients. The induction approach was also used uh, in uh, an attempt to reduce the dose of therapy for HPV negative patients, so, uh, excuse me, for HPV positive patients. So clearly, uh, induction therapy uh, is still under investigation. Uh, in HPV negative patients, it's used to enhance survival. For HPV positive patients where survival is better, induction therapy is being used uh, in the cooperative groups, uh, an Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group trial, testing whether induction therapy containing, containing uh, cetuximab uh, and then using complete responders to reduce the radiotherapy dose uh, could be a way to reduce toxicity uh, in an HPV positive group where survival is, is relatively good. So let's transition and talk about HPV negative disease. Okay. HPV negative disease um, is usually disease that's associated with smoking and alcohol use. Um, there is, however, a, a subset of patients that I think merit discussion, and that, that is the group of patients who present with oral cavity tumors. Oral cavity tumors um, are on, a, on the rise, so epidemiologic data shows us that there's an increased incidence in oral cavity tumors. And the interesting thing is that these oral cavity tumors are predominantly oral tongue cancers, and they're occurring predominantly in women. This is extremely important for um, clinicians to recognize. Um, it's very important to understand that surgery is the primary treatment for these oral cavity tumors, and that treatment must be adequate. That means the surgery must be sufficient to be able to clear the tumor. What we see not infrequently is patients who have oral uh, cavity cancers getting suboptimal resections, leaving tumor behind. So we have patients with positive margins. And there's a tendency uh, to, for clinicians to say, hey, look, going in and removing more tongue is going to adversely impact function. So let's just clean this up with a little radiation or radiation and chemo. That's actually not a good, a, a good solution. The best thing is to do the right surgery up front in these patients. Get a good clear margin because there is clear data that if you don't get a, a clean margin, that the overall outcome for these patients with chemo radiation to mop up positive margins is inadequate and inferior. 